Hey everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Wallace and the Time Machine. In the previous episodes, we went back in time to 1912, only to find out that we've landed on the steamship Titanic. We tried to return to our time machine and go back to the future, but one of our control elements of the time machine is missing. Somebody has absconded with it, and without it, we could be stuck on the Titanic. We've met a very sexy lady named Bessie and her creepy dad, and we think that Sir Clyde Farnsworth, the dastardly bastard, has that control element. Oh, Sir Clyde said that he could see you at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Thanks, I'll be there. Did you uh, two take part in the lifeboat drill? Lifeboat drill? I don't recall any lifeboat drill. Do you, Bessie? No, I don't. We boarded at Queenstown, Ireland. Maybe the drill was held behind before there. Then... I strongly suggest that two of you take some time tomorrow and find out which lifeboat you're assigned to. Don't be daft, Wallace! When we board, a steward assured us that this ship was unsinkable. Let's get some sleep. Wallace, you can have the bunk above me again. Don't look at me like that when you say that, old man. Oh man, he's gonna have busy hands all night long. That's my fear. Oh, much later. Oh, why? He's like, look at my butt. No, old man. Wallace, are you awake? Yeah, yeah, I am. It, Papa is asleep. I want to talk. Can I come to your bunk? This is really weird, girl. Your dad's right below us. I'm worried about two things. Number one, he's going to wake up and be mad. Number two, the weight of your body combined with the weight of my body might be more than the bunk is designed for. And then the bunk will fall and crush your dad, murdering him. And then if we have sex on your dad's dead body, that's just going to be weird. What about your father? Papa's a very sound sleeper. Noise doesn't awaken him. Okay. I bet this is the first time Wallace has ever had a girl in his bed. Why did you ask about the lifeboat drill? Have you noticed how many lifeboats there are on this ship? No, I haven't. Is that important? Yes, it's important! You're on the ship for the love of God! Don't be daft, whore, maid! Yes, it is! There are 20 lifeboats. I looked at most of them and I calculated that they would hold just over 1,100 people. What am I, Rain Man all of a sudden? <laughs> there are over 1,300 passengers on board and that number doesn't include the crew! A lot of people will die if the ship sinks. Papa said that a steward told him that the ship's unsinkable. No ship is unsinkable. Use your brain. Use your brain, girl. You seem especially worried about the ship sinking. Should I tell her everything? You won't believe this. No, you're going to ruin the space time continuum, Wallace. What if, what if she alerts the captain and then they don't crash? And everyone on this ship is a Hitler! And there'll be 1,300 Hitlers in the future! Who can stop that? You won't believe this, but Bessie, but I'll tell you anyway. Before we reach New York, this ship is going to hit an iceberg and sink. Because the compartments are not designed very well. Because the water is going to rise to the top and just pour into the next one. A lot of people will die. Most will be third-class passengers. What makes you say that? How can you predict the future? No, I... I, I can't predict the future. I am from the future, Bessie. Prove it. Well, how am I going to prove it? What can I tell you that you don't know about the future yet? I'm telling you the ship's going to sink, but you're not going to believe until the ship sinks. Yeah, uh, have you seen any icebergs on the trip? No, no, I haven't. Tomorrow morning, the ship will receive a warning about icebergs ahead. You can check with the ship's officer at noon to verify that the bridge was notified. If I weren't from the future, I'd have no way of knowing that information. Now would I? Would I, Bessie? You know, now that I think uh, about it, this is the period in time where Wallace should consider asking Bessie if she has any dresses in his size. <laughs> because if somehow we don't get back to the time machine in time, maybe we want to dress so we can be like, I'm a girl, put me on the lifeboat. Gotta send my babies. I'll protect the babies in me. I'm not exactly sure why I do. But I do believe you. Yeah, but you also believed the Clyde Farnwood story. Are Papa and I going to die? I, I I don't know. I I don't know. More than half of the people on board will drown. If you're from the future, how did you get here? I came in a time traveling machine. Can you save Papa and me with your time machine? I don't know what how much weight it carries, and I don't have the control service for it. I But I could try. 
Someone took the controller from it. I think it was Sir Clyde. That's why I asked to see him. Because I don't want to die. What if you can't find the controller? I don't know. I didn't build the time machine. Uh, I can try to get you and your father into a lifeboat. The crew will let women and children board the lifeboats first. You know what, Wallace? That means Wallace needs to dress like a little kid. He needs, like, little short shorts and a little sailor hat and shit. Hey, I'm a kid! Make sure you and your father are on the lifeboat deck at 11 p.m. tomorrow night. If you can, get one of Sir Clyde's suits for your father to wear. Go to the starboard side of the boat jet deck. They will let your father onto a lifeboat if there's room. If the crew thinks he's a first-class passenger, they're more likely to let him... Into a lifeboat, you know? I'm frightened. Would you hold me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, boners. Roasting up against your crotch. Boner crotch. Hip times. Oh, yeah. It's not awkward or weird that your dad is right below us. I hope he's sleeping. Yes, I'm sleeping. Very good. Continue. Oh, yes. I like that. No, oh, Wallace, wow, you move fast. Booby grab. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. He says that every time he makes a move. He's going to have sex with her, put his dick in her, and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have just been gun fucking you right now. It feels nice. You have a gentle touch. Kiss me again. <laughs> oh. Papa's a heavy sleeper. Get undressed. Oh, Bessie, you whore! Oh! B Bessie, your dad's right below us! Mm. <laughs> I don't hear anything! <laughs> what if he comes up and he sees his daughter naked? That's gonna be awkward for you and him. At least I hope it's awkward for you. I hope you don't want your dad to watch. What should we do now? Oh, my... Um... I, I'm going to kiss your boobies. Feed me your booby milk. I'm very hungry. I've not eaten in days. I've been time traveling. Slurp that up. Give me all the booby milk. I like that. Oh my God, you don't know how thirsty I was, girl. I didn't bring any food with me on my time travel trip. Man, I like that too. So, um, do you know what 69 is? No, I can only count to eight. Uh, uh, oh... No, but I'd like to find out. La, la, la. You know, though, in this time period, it would be mega hairy. You'd be like, I just went to the jungle. I can't find anything in the jungle. La, 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 la. Mm. <laughs> is, is, isn't her dad going to hear that? Oh, I think I hear slurping sounds. Delicious. Oh. I want you. Oh, you watch me finally! Not you! Go back to sleep! Oh, I never get any. I want you too. Um, you're talking into my dick. It'd be like, I want a fool. Doing you from behind! Doing you from behind! She doesn't really look into it, though. She's like, oh. Uh. Whoa! <laughs> That's the iceberg! We hit the iceberg! We were off by the day! We were... I better go back to my bunk now. No, you just used me for sex. You're the kind of person who, like, afterwards just leaves. I'm in love with you now, Bessie. I put my baby juice in you. I hope you sleep well. You too. Oh, I heard so much sex and I loved it all. April 14th, 1912, 5 p.m. Clyde Farnsworth, I demand a word with you. Good afternoon, Sir Clyde. I am Wallace George. I don't recall ever seeing you before. What do you want? I'd like to talk with you about your visit to the cargo hold a few days ago. You better come in. I already came in something earlier. Bam! Now then, what do you want? When you were in the hold, did you notice a rather odd-looking machine? Maybe. What's it to you? The control lever from it is missing, and I wondered if you knew anything about it. Like, anything at all, dude. I really need that, and it's not a butt plug. But if you put it in your butt, I will still take it, because I need it. It's in the safe. No, I don't know a thing. I couldn't know. In any case, a steward was with me the entire time. You dirty bastard, you looked at the safe. You have my control rod, don't you? 
It's disgraceful how they treat first-class passengers. Now get out of here, I'm expecting a lady. Hmm, he lied about being escorted inside the hold. I noticed him glancing at his safe. I need to get into that safe. It's unsafe. Oh, my dearest Bessie, receiver of my loin juice, I think Sir Clyde has the time machine control locked up in his safe. Do you know the combination, and can you get me into his cabin? I knew your combination last night, Bessie. I can't get you into the cabin. I'm not sure it's a safe combination, though. Is it 69? Oh, that's funny, because you, you put your dick in my mouth. Oh, wait, what do you mean? Sir Clyde sometimes has trouble remembering numbers, so he writes notes to himself with hints. I do the same thing. Oh, my. What what sort of hints? Well, one hint was month and year Magna Carta was signed. Oh, great. And something at Runnymede and 14, 12, 14, 19, something like that. Are there any other hints? None that I can remember. I'll figure it out. I watched him opening the safe one day. Oh, that's a great story, Bessie. I want to hear about all these other things that happened to you. You want to tell me about the time you ate a sandwich? The bottom dial on the safe is fake. Only the top one's real. Oh, actually, you gave me good information. Thank you. Sorry I yelled at you. It's 5.45 now. Sir Clyde bragged that he has a woman come into his room at 5.30. So you're saying um, he's done already? The ship will hit an iceberg around 11.40 p.m. We'll have to watch his room and hope that they leave before then. The time machine is in the forward cargo hold. After we hit the iceberg, we won't have much time before the cargo hold is underwater. Why don't we just break in there, kick him in the face until he gives us the safe number? He's going to die anyway. I understand. April 14th, 9.12, or 1912, 11 p.m. So we have, what, 50 minutes left to go before the Titanic's going to start to go down? I thought they'd never leave. Should I stand by the door and keep watch? Yeah, no, wait, no, you better go inside with, you better go inside with me. Don't get distracted, Wallace. Do not start no bed sex. We need to get the time machine and get out. Sir Clyde might use the other door, so keep, keep and watch might not do any good anyway. I need to get the safe open within two minutes if we're to have enough time to reach the forward cargo hold. Let me know if you need my help. Uh... What about my father? How will we find him in time to get your time machine? Uh, did you tell him to be on the boat deck at 11 and to get a lifeboat if they have a drill? I did. Then uh, he, he should be alright. We'll be able to find him then, most likely. And if we don't, it's alright, because I don't want to bone him in the future. Now let's hope I can open the safe and the controller is in it. Wallace is going to try to open the safe using the information that Bessie gave him. Using the left mouse and mouse button, click on the small white circle and hold the left mouse button to rotate the dial. Releasing the mouse button will set the number. If Wallace gets the numbers right, the safe will open. If the safe, if he fails, all the numbers will be reset to zero. He has two minutes to open the safe. If he needs assistance, click on the hot spot to ask Bessie to open the safe. I don't know what numbers are. Um. I don't. No, I want to reset. All right, that wasn't it. Th there are too many dates. I thought it was like the Magna Carta. So it'd be like 1492. No, wait, that's when Columbus came to America. Um. No, I don't. How do I undo it? Can I just rotate it the way I want? Help me out, Bessie. I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, she did it. Great. Let's get out of here. We don't have time to waste. April 14th, 1912, 11.35 p.m. At the Harch Hatch. Not the Harch. The Ford Cargo Hold. I should go find Papa. My place is with him. Oh, man. Do we stay on the ship with her or do we disagree? I think staying on the ship with her is a dumb idea. I think we should disagree. Tell her, come with us to the future. What we really ought to do is just take the time machine and go back in time three hours and then pick him up and then leave. 
your father will be okay if you went to the lifeboat deck. They're going to think he's a first-class passenger. You gave him the clothes. We need to get off here. We can always go back in time and find him and reunite. We've hit the iceberg! Holy frozen ice titties! Come with me! We don't have time to argue! I'll come with you! Yeah, you already did last night. Hey! Moments later. Don't be afraid. Please make sure you keep your head and all your extremities inside the time machine. Because I'm not exactly sure the time vortex bubble, how far it extends beyond me. There's a hypothetical possibility if you reached your head out too far, your head would pop off or age or something like that. And that would be bad. It's hit 88 miles per hour. We're going back to the future. Welcome to my time, baby. I hope you like it. What? Wallace, shouldn't we uh, find out about her father to see if her father's alive or not? I will, as long as we're together. What about your dad? What about your dad? Wallace looked up a list of Titanic survivors on the internet. Bessie's father survived. He helped others onto the lifeboats. Sean was in the last lifeboat to leave the doomed liner. Further research showed that Sean married a young widow, also a Titanic survivor, and that they had a daughter. Bessie eventually met her half-sister's great-great-great-granddaughter. Wait, why don't we go back in time and grab her dad and bring him back to the future? Because we might have really fucked up the timeline if he was supposed to die and now we made a bunch of kids. Well, everybody, that was Wallace in the time machine. That was pretty cool. We gotta go to the past, have love with a sexy lady, save her from the dastardly Sir Clyde's Farnsworth, and then we went to the future and her dad survived. I have no idea why we didn't at least at some point be like, let's go visit your dad. I don't know, maybe we messed with the space-time continuum enough. And luckily, we didn't become our own granddad. I had a lot of fun. I didn't see Cowboy Duck, though. He was supposed to be in the game. Maybe I missed him. Maybe I need to go back to see if there was a spot where I missed him. But thanks for watching, everybody. I had a lot of fun, and um, I'll see you all in the next LP.